Data flow diagrams show how data flows through a system. They also show the inputs and outputs of a system. They specifically show who and where the input data comes from, how data flows around the system, how the data is processed, what data is stored and who or where the system is output to. Data flow diagrams use rectangular boxes for internal key parts of the system, such as people or departments. They use ovals for any external entities like a customer. They use arrows to show the direction that the data is flowing, and each arrow is labelled with what information is being transferred. Here's an example level zero data flow diagram. When in the car showroom, there are options for financing a vehicle. You would go through the car salesman and give them your personal details and any financial information like your salary and things like that. The car salesman enters this into the system and the data goes to the finance company. They will process the data and return a quotation to the system. The car salesman will pass the data on to you. Take a minute to examine the diagram and look at the flow of information and data. An information flow diagram is slightly different from a data flow diagram because they only show internal flow of information. They could be used to show how different departments communicate and work together. This example shows a student giving their assessor an assignment and the assessor would return the marked assignment back to the student. Flow charts might be used to show the steps required in a complex process. Unlike data flow diagrams, they do not focus on data, but on the processing steps, as in what will actually happen. The first symbol that we need to look at is called the terminator symbol. It's used to start and end a flow chart. This symbol is used to show any process that takes place. Any instructions or calculations where something is getting processed or worked out by a computer system. This symbol is used for a yes or no choice. Whenever there's any sort of option in the program, the decision symbol needs to be used. This symbol is used to show data. It's usually some sort of input, output, or where data is stored. As an example, we can look at a problem. We need a program which is gonna calculate 20% discount for an item that costs more than a certain price and 10% if it's less. It would need to ask for the input of a price and it would need to make a decision. It needs to output the discount based on the price of the item. So here we can see our example flowchart. We have terminator symbols to start and stop the flowchart. We use an input symbol to show that some sort of input is required. In this case, it's the price of the item. A decision symbol is used to decide which path to take. If the price is greater than 20, then we go left, which is where it says yes. If it's not greater than 20, then we go to the right where it says no. Two different processes will take place. If the price is greater than 20, then we get a greater discount. And if it's less than 20, we get less of a discount. Once the process is complete, we can output to the screen what their final sale price is with the discount. A system diagram is used to show the physical layout of components and devices in a digital system. It doesn't contain any information about data flow or processing. They can give a lot of information in a small space and they're a good way to communicate infrastructure. They help in designing workable systems in this case, we are looking at a client server setup. A table helps to organize information into rows and columns. This provides a much clearer way of representing data than a full written explanation. It's often used to represent numerical data like financial information, policies, reports, and letters. In this particular case, we can see some financial data. It's very easy to, to read and to examined because of its layout. 
On certain occasions, written information is needed to support or explain diagrams and tables and provide more detailed information. It's particularly helpful when added context is needed or if people might struggle to interpret a diagram without support.